On today's episode of Anime Afterthought ReZero Season 2 Episode 3, The Long-Awaited Reunion. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of shit went down in today's episode, and it left off in a pretty big cliffhanger. But suffice it to say, today's episode definitely gets my seal of approval. Now, last we left off, we were informed by the new maid at the house, Frederick Ballman, that Roswall, Ram, and the other villagers has not returned from the sanctuary. And while confronting Beatrice on possible reasons for their absence, we were hit with several terms and revelations, including a possible connection between her and the Sin Archbishop of Sloth, Beetlegeist. God damn, I so wish I could call him Beetlejuice. But nonetheless, with a nice farewell from Frederica, giving us a task to find her younger brother, Garfield, as well as receiving a good luck traveling charm for the new maid in training Petra, our group sets out. A decision we'll soon come to learn may have dire consequences. As we traverse the Lost World looking for the sanctuary, events unravel, leading to an unconscious Amelia in a transported Subaru. Confronted by a pale woman in a black dress, Subaru is filled with unease, as well well as he should be. For this is Echidna, the Witch of Greed, and this is her tea party. And this is where we pick up today's episode. Subaru has been invited to Echidna's tea party, and like I surmised last episode, this is just a metaphysical recreation. This is an actual transportation of his physical form. This is all just with souls or consciousness. This is actually the soul of Echidna who has been trapped in this witch's graveyard, aka the sanctuary. While it seems her physical form is no more, her consciousness still exists, at least in this plane of existence. And if you're like me, you may be wondering why in the hell Subaru was transported to this realm to begin with. Well, that question was asked and answered. And once again, it has something to do with this mysterious term, the Witch's Factor. After defeating the Sin Archbishop of Greed, Beetlegeist, it seems Subaru has actually acquired the Witch Factor of Sloth. Establishing some sort of connection, whether it be to the Witch's Graveyard or Echidna herself, the Witch Factor of Sloth is actually the reason why he is here. And once again, I absolutely love the conversation between Subaru and Echidna. Once again, surprising a denizen of this world with his unique personality. Going as far as even touching Echidna, a witch, a being in this world seen as vile and monstrous and pure evil, and she's trying to surmise whether he is brave or bold, or in reality, just kind of ignorant. But the best part of today's episode is actually get name drops of the other witches as well as their sin and a description of their own motives and personalities from a different point of view. Like I said, witches are seen in this world as a vile, evilest, monsters being. I mean, no one even is supposed to say the word Satella like it's a bad fucking omen, like they're gonna fucking summon her out of the fucking blue, because witches are just seen as these complete evil creatures. Yet every description that Echidna gave of her fellow witches, you know, besides Satella, had a more honorable, respectable definition to it. Starting out, we have the witch of gluttony, Daphne, who created beasts that defile the will of God, yet saved the world from starvation. The Witch of Lust, Carmilla, who granted emotion to non-human beings in an attempt to fill the world with love. The Witch of Wrath, Minerva, who struck people to heal them as she lamented the state of her war-torn world. The Witch of Sloth, Sekhmet, who drove a dragon past a great waterfall just for a chance to rest. The Witch of Pride, Typhoon, out of youthful innocence and cruelty judged criminals one after another. The Witch of Greed, Echidna, the embodiment of the thirst for knowledge. And of course, Echidna. Echidna saved the best for last, the Witch of Envy, she who used all other witches as a form of sustenance while she made the whole world her enemy, the most detestable of them all. But before Echidna is even able to utter her name, it's time for this conversation to end. As Echidna points out, Subaru is visibly shaken, compiled by the fact that the tea he drank so abruptly at the very beginning of this episode finally has taken its effect. Made from a quote-unquote part of Echidna's body fluid, it seems this tea he has been spiked by what? Well, the witch factor of envy, which leads me to question, what exactly are these factors? What are their purposes? What do they do? And with what Echidna just said, does that mean Subaru is now in possession of two, both sloth and greed? But it seems Subaru doesn't have time for that. Even while Echidna is giving him a chance to learn from her vast array of knowledge, he only has one question on mind. This witch's graveyard, is this the sanctuary? I mean, where, where is it located? Is it right outside the ruins? She's like, um, yeah, it is. It's right out there. Okay, one last question. If I ask you, will you let me go? And this completely shocks her. Um, you're leaving already? I mean, back when I alive, you know, everyone would come from all corners of the globe just to get a chance to ascertain some of my knowledge. You're you're ready to dip already? It's like, yeah, it's time for me to go uh, talk to Amelia. I'd rather do that than spend one more second here. Once again, this witch is thrown for a loop. Completely upset by the fact that Subaru wants to leave, it definitely paints this supposed vile creature in a different light. 
date. To me, she's this hashtag lonely girl looking for someone to talk to. But of course, Subaru only has eyes for Amelia and he needs to get back to her. But of course, Subaru is determined on leaving, but that's easier said than done. Even for what little knowledge he has gained, Echidna requires compensation for everything has its price. This time, it's a vow, a promise to tell no one of the conversation that's transpired. As a parting gift from Echidna to Subaru before he is sent through this portal that has ripped a hole in the facade of this fake world, she has granted him the permission to take the trial of the sanctuary. Echidna licking her fingers very seductively, might I put. I don't know, I'm 100% sure what the fuck was going on there, but uh, me likey? While she ponders whether Subaru's impression of her will change once he understands the truth, she gives him a nice flick of the forehead and out he goes. And that's about seven minutes into the episode, and well, I'd say we're not even fucking half over at this point. We learned a lot in that very beginning, you know, the, the whole conversation between him and Echidna, and yet not a lot was actually said between those two. Yes, she kind of spouted out the definition of every witch, which was very unique and definitely a different point of view. She makes them seem very altruistic, and each one had more of a selfless goal in mind, yet these beings are reviled in this world. They're they're monsters. They are the, the epitome of evil evil, and yet each one gave a definition that actually sounded very positive for the world. I mean, I'm not 100% sure what's going on with the witches. Are they truly evil beings? I mean, Satella is, obviously. She devoured the other fucking witches. It really makes you wonder if Echidna was telling the truth, or is it just, you know, through her eyes how she saw the other witches? Well, and of herself, but she didn't really paint a good picture of herself. A do-anything-for-knowledge type of attitude? Yeah, I could see some shit going wrong with that. But, lo and behold, we are back in the real world. We'd just woken up in the ruins and we are met with a very interesting character, but a very familiar character, at least when it comes to the mouth, the teeth particularly. This sharp fang character we are met, yes, it is Garfield, the younger brother of Frederica, and he is going all ham on Otto and Subaru, and even takes down Subaru's ground dragon with like a fucking suplex and shit. Like, you can really tell this motherfucker is half beast. And of course, Subaru waits the last fucking second to name drop Frederica. Hey, how the fuck do you know my sister's name? Like, oh dude, yeah, um, she sent us here, that's why we're here. And it basically ends this entire thing with, oh, you know her? Yeah, um, my bad, why didn't you say that earlier? I'll go ahead and take you to Roswell and Ram and shit like that. Like, motherfucker, like, I understand you might play the position of the guard dog, but like just attacking without knowing anything. Like he literally picks up Subaru and just fucking chucks him, which by my ad shows that he does have some strength in him. But eventually, you know what? Everything is good and well. They start heading out to the quote unquote actual sanctuary, the, the, the city that Roswell has taken the villagers to. Amelia does eventually wake up and we found out the reason why she was incapacitated in the first place. And that was because of the barrier. The sanctuary is protected by a pretty strong barrier that seems to only affect half bloods as we find out later in the episode after you know getting back with ram as well as seeing that roswell is not in the best condition the only way to actually get out of the sanctuary is to complete the trial you know the one that echidna gave subaru permission to undertake earlier on it seems like that's going to play a vital role coming up but like i said we're in this town it's very disheveled it just looks like it's fucking war torn and just uh, it's very depressive we come across ram and at this point subaru is just unable to to talk to Ram about Rem. I mean, with everything going on in the state of this town, I mean, it really doesn't seem like the best time. Luckily, em Amelia's there to like intervene, stop the awkward, uh, the awkwardness going on. They're taken in front of Walls Roll. Like I said, he is just battered and beaten. And the reason is because he tried to undertake the trial, which is only meant for half breeds, half bloods. So you might want to ask like, why is he even there? He is supposedly a human. At least I think he's a human, but at least the villagers, why are they still there? Well, I mean, it's seems that the half-bloods are doing it. They are actually keeping the humans hostage to make sure someone takes and completes the trial? Like, it seems the goal is, or at least how Garfield is trying to put it, is that they want out. They literally cannot leave the sanctuary until someone, f you know, does the trial. So to make sure that a certain individual would take the trial would show up, they're keeping the humans hostage. Well, we know of one half-breed who has just entered the sanctuary, aka Amelia. It's up to her to take this test and what is it undo the barrier let the half bloods out i mean like i said i'm not 100 sure on what his goal is it seems like everyone wants out or the the barrier dispelled we have a nice uh you know confrontation between the humans you know the achilles the village chief as well as amelia everyone seems you know riled together they're they're giving her praise they're leaving it up in the, her you know somewhat unconfident yet capable hands like they're putting a lot of faith into her and at this point she's kind of untested like she's been through some shit but not really some shit like 
at least from the villagers point of view they really don't know her and they're pretty pretty much putting all their faith into her so once again we inevitably end up back in front of the ruins the place where this trial is supposed to take and as we see Amelia you know get one last cheer from Subaru and approach the ruins it begins to glow that indicates that she has been accepted to take the trial and almost immediately after she enters the glow begins to dissipate and this shouldn't happen Garfield's like dude as if the trial's going on this thing should stay you know well lit everyone is worried of course they all take after but what the fuck can they do if they're not accepted you know they can't enter well we know one guy who actually you know has been granted permission the ruins begin to illuminate once again as Subaru gets close and everyone is in shock and awe as he enters the ruins heading down the corridor he see a doors open and upon entering the room he sees Amelia unconscious on the ground once again god damn does she get knocked out a lot but of course he's one to talk he soon loses continuity when he wakes up he's back in earth like he's back in the normal world like he's home we see his action figures and mangas displayed and getting waking up by Papa Subaru Papa Natsuki like uh, we meet his fucking father like okay so <sighs> like a lot happened in this episode first and foremost I love the fact that she actually went over the other witches we get kind of like a shadowy silhouette are we gonna meet these other girls I'm not 100% sure I mean I'm assuming they're girls I mean they're witches are there warlocks in this world I don't know I mean I'm assuming that are we gonna meet them like uh, I don't know I don't know so we've met Echidna yet this is only her consciousness or soul that's trapped in the witch's graveyard aka the sanctuary who by the way never call her the witch of greed in front of Roswell her name is fucking Echidna so right there we get maybe some kind of connection between those two we do know that the Roswell estate has been looking over the witch's graveyard since generations ago so mm, there's got to be some kind of connection between those two characters but yeah I mean we've met a witch so now even if the other ones are technically she she stated it very weird she like consumed the others as sustenance so maybe they're not dead maybe they're or maybe they're not 100% dead like like you guys said in the last week's episode you know looking at our main character death is not always the end maybe she took their power or consumed their uh, their witch's factor we know that the witch's factor exists maybe like I'm not 100% sure exactly but we've met one does that mean we can meet the other witches because their designs as well as their personalities seem pretty fucking cool like I'd like to meet these characters but ooh, in the end I'm not 100% sure speaking of witches factors though does every sin archbishop have the witches factor of their quote unquote witches sin like did somehow you know lie get the witches factor of gluttony does does regulus have greed but then how did echidna give subaru a or is it okay so they, the whole witches factor thing is just fucking got my mind all boggled and shit like i'm totally into that shit and yes we still have to deal with this entire you know war-torn village of the sanctuary where the half-bloods are fucking i guess trapped there and they want to break out yes but i think the most badass thing in today's episode is this possible real possible memory maybe fabrication i'm not 100 sure whether this is illusion or real of the actual you know real world this is subaru's home i mean we're home this is papa natsuki like are we gonna meet mama natsuki like i'm, I'm not 100 fu fucking sure like I, i'm just fucking excited this dude seems legit hilarious he seems like one of those overbearing parents like you know uh Ichigo's father from Bleach. I mean, he seems legit, but I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. God damn, today's episode was good. Today's episode was fucking good. But where do we go from here? I mean, the trial just started. So if Subaru is going through this shit, obviously Amelia is going through the same shit. We do know that there's that, that word that was, you know, good over your past or uh, we're going to the past. Like it has some, like you have to get over uh, some kind of personal trials and tribulations. Maybe, maybe she's in her own illusion, her own own world uh i don't know if if you guys watch the the ova or the movie you know that her past is pretty fucking sad so I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but yeah, you know she's going through some shit right now too, and she doesn't have her main man Puck by her side. He left it all up to Subaru, so yeah. Yeah, going forward, I'm fucking excited. I'm fucking excited to find out what the hell's going on. I need to learn more about the witch factors, the witches, the possible connections between, you know, Beatrice and Beetlegeist, as well as Roswell and Echidna, and what the fuck are we gonna do about Rem? When the fuck is he gonna break that fucking news to Ram, or is she just gonna, you know, come home one day and see some chick in her bed like uh who the fuck's this blue haired bitch like what the fuck's going on and why does she look like me like i don't know <laughs> i don't fucking uh, i don't fucking know anyways i love today's episode so with all that being said and more re-zero next week i honestly cannot wait for future episodes